how well this works out. Looks like uh, bit rate's okay, no drum pain was okay. This looks like it's going good. And we are ready to rock and roll. Nope, I don't want to continue though. <laughs> so we have an old save here, but what we are actually going to be doing is we're going to be trying to oh, do exactly this. So, this is a game from Fail Better Games, the creators of Fallen London, which is a sort of story-based HTML game. Um, very fun little free-to-play experience. I, I do recommend it if you're looking for something to waste time on. Uh, but basically it has a lot of sort of lovely writing that's a bit of steampunk, a bit of eldritch horror, a bit of just uh, delightful surrealism. It's uh, really a lovely universe, and it takes place in the city of Fallen London, which is a city that exists beneath the earth in an underground sea. And today we're going to be exploring their storytelling, and we're going to be trying to create a captain who survives for the course of Sunless Sea. First things first, we're going to lower that audio volume just a little bit, make sure that everything's looking good. Okay, so, um, in addition to being a game with a really rich and beautiful story, I actually love this game because it has a very strong roguelike presence. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, roguelite stuff where you can carry over things, but you have to work very hard to get something that carries over from one character to another, and then you still have to work harder yet to keep it, which means that it's really quite a challenge to get to the end of the game and to actually achieve whatever ambition you choose to set for yourself. That's something that really appeals to me. I love hard games, I love good challenges, and I really want to like just basically sort of share this game with people and uh, just sort of do a run through of it before the new DLC launches and uh, the game changes up substantially. All right, so here we go new game, yes I am sure. Alright, three decades ago in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen by bats. Now it lies a mile below the surface. It was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone, but it opened vast black ocean to you. Welcome to the undersea. Okay, so, uh, you can choose a past wreath in shadows, but it's not highly recommended. Uh, there's an achievement for it, of course, but uh, for the most part you actually want to pick something because it'll give you a bonus of, I believe, 25 to uh, any one of your skills, and as you can see, they're already at 25, so that's something that we want to do. Um, I typically go with the Poet. I really like the Pages bonus. I'm very familiar with the Poet, but uh, today I want to do something a little bit different, and I'm going to take a Street Urchin. Um, so, first things first, let's move that over here, just to make sure that matches up. Okay. And uh, we're just going to double check because we did something cool here. We can do this. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Looks like it's, uh, yeah, should be good. Okay, cool. So, uh, what are we picking? We are picking a street urchin is our plan. Your urchin gang, gang cast you out when you grew too tall. You took to sea rather than graduate to larger crimes, but I had just enough to buy a ship. And I get a bonus to Veils, the skill of subtlety and evasion. The other options, uh, there are five core stats in Sunless Sea, and each of these choices gives you a bonus to one of those stats. Uh, Veils is the ability to do lots of tricky things. It ends up being very useful in a lot of important skill checks in Sunless Sea, and is one of the skills that I value the most highly. Pages uh, is a skill that you cannot normally increase yourself, which is why uh, being a poet can be very strong. Uh, but essentially what it does is it uh, makes it so that your experience points convert into skills faster, or rather your fragments convert into secrets faster, because secrets are the currency of fallen London. Uh, the veteran of the campaign of 68 fought in the invasion of hell, but London's armies lost. Uh, iron is the skill of causing direct damage and is determined for all of your fighting checks. Hearts is the skill of healing and is determined for all of your terror checks. Uh, this is a game where terror is a serious and important thing that you have to constantly manage lest you go insane and sink beneath the Z. 
Um, finally, Natural Philosopher, you can get a bonus to Mirrors, which in addition to giving you all of the standard spot checks, perception checks, you know, just anything that allows you to navigate dark and concealed corridors is also extremely useful for finding firing solutions and is your second combat stat. All right, that being said, we're looking to be a street urchin. I'm really interested in having a high veils to start with. It's a really decent uh, skill to have. Personally, I think that all of these are perfectly okay, with the exception of maybe the ordained priest having high hearts early on. I don't know. I don't know that that's all that good. And also, for religion. Okay, anyways. Yes, street urchin. Here we go. So, low cunning on the high seas. In addition to my 25 veils bonus, I get a couple of extra echoes, not a particularly big deal, and I get a tiny, tiny bonus by way of an officer. And you can see right here is the Longshanks Gunner, a recent graduate from the Ur Urchin Gains who sort of knows how to fire cannons. All right, next thing to do is pick an ambition. What does winning mean to me? Well, I know how it is to be poor, so now I want a mansion. Servants, fine clothes, and perhaps a family. I am going to go for the wealth ambition, and we might change it later. Uh, a private kingdom is something that uh, certainly is doable in this game, and I probably intend to establish a colony even if I don't establish my... Uh, even if I choose to continue my primary ambition. So, we're going to be doing that. All right, Death and Darkness 2, but it's worth the gamble. I won't be reading all of these. Uh, I am streaming this to YouTube, of course, so I expect we will be able to pause and read things when they're uh, interested. I'll be reading some of them. I, I like uh, I like a lot of this particular uh, stuff going on. Um, you can choose a wide variety of titles to be addressed by. It does not actually matter uh, based on your gender. So you can be called my lady and still be a man. One of the lovely features of Sunless Sea. Um, yes, so I'm looking at either... Oh, 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 oh. Hold on a moment. And we are back. <laughs> Okay, so yes, we were, uh, yes, time to pick a lineage, or rather a, oh, hold on a moment, it's really loud, okay. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> here we go. Alright, so I can choose to be addressed as madam, or sir, or citizen, egalitarian sentiments. My lady, Captain. I'm quite happy with Captain. Kind of amused by my lady, though. Perhaps I do come from a noble family. Who's to know? Okay, so yes. Visions of nobility. And uh, there are many, many different portraits to choose from. I think the one I'm going to go with is this one. I'm just rather fond of it. <laughs> oh, although that fancy hat also looks lovely. Yeah, let's do that. And we'll just go for a simple name. Something fairly common for me. Okay, and here we go. So there's an advice for Captain's book. You can look through it and uh, learn a lot of things about <clears throat> how the game works. Oh my goodness, I will need to get some water real quick. But uh, after you're done, you can sell the book for 50 Echoes, which is quite solid. Uh, my lodgings... Uh, I don't actually have an elegant townhouse, right? Correct, okay. Reading the morning papers is always useful. It gets you a uh, supplies early on and also a recent news, which is fairly important. Um, the more you learn, uh, in Fallen London and Sunless Sea, uh, knowledge is power and often a form of supply. People trade for secrets, they trade for news, they trade for stories and songs and dread surmises. There are many different things in Fallen London that are essentially information, and in being information will uh, supply some value to you in Echoes, the currency of London. Okay, so we have a couple of uh, simple things that we do first. Uh, the first thing that you want to set up is you want to make sure that you get 
uh, something particular that the Admiral needs from the Admiral to Admiralty Survey Office. The Survey Office pays sea captains for recent information, and in addition, you can speak to agents in uh, set locations, such as Guider's Morn in the Corsair's Forest, and uh, when you do so, you will get strategic information, and that is tradable for a sizable sum of echoes, usually around, I think, two to three hundred. Um, might be a little less. Offering passage to a tomb colonist is also always a good opening objective, and there's absolutely no reason not to do that as well. Okay, um, so dry dock we don't need to do. We will need to buy fuel and supplies. We can also hire on more crew members. Having a heart, high hearts quality determines whether we get one or three, and 77% means it's pretty easy to fill up our current list. But on the other hand, I've got 8 out of 10 right now, and I'm not actually sure that I need to fill to 10. This is something that I've always done before, but at a cost of 30 Echoes, that's a pretty sizable chunk of my early cash. So I think what I'm going to do this time around is not hire more crew, and instead we're going to be a little less risky with the ones that we have. Okay, so that should reduce the food requirements of my crew members, which is fairly important. Um, as you can see up top here, there are three things that we're keeping track of. The first is fuel, how many barrels of fuel that I have used. The second is hunger, which is once it reaches this point, we feed the crew on whatever supplies we have. We run out of uh, supplies and we start have to, having to worry about things like cannibalism, so it's fairly important to have a decently high amount of supplies. And then the last one is terror, and the higher terror gets, the more likely there are going to be some spooky events, things that will eventually like sort of drive you crazy. Once you get to 99 Terror, um, there's a flat check to not die, basically. And it's fairly important to try to keep Terror under 50. But uh, for the most part, it's not actually all that bad to accumulate a lot of Terror over a run, especially if you can find good ways to reduce it using money. Okay. Um, so. Let's look at our shopping stuff, uh, options. So we know that we're going to vendor buy first, which means that the main thing that we need to worry about is what we're gonna buy for vendor bite, and that should be fuel. We're basically just going to fill up on fuel and probably get at least one extra supplies. 19 fuel, seven supplies, that is enough for a good long route around Fallen London. And so that should get us ready to go. Our gunnery officer. Uh, it's important to speak to your officers and ask them what they want from life. Uh, this gunnery officer is someone who really wants to go to Khan's shadow. And if you put her ashore at the shadow, uh, she's not one to kick you downstairs, but she will not forget you. Uh, you will lose the first officer if you give them what they want. Uh, or at least that's not always the case, but you can certainly do that. Um, and doing so is quite excellent. Interestingly enough, you can actually start a relationship with the Longshanks Gunner, but only if your iron is higher than your veils by, I think, twice as much. Is that correct? 20 points higher than your veils, which uh, is pretty difficult, seeing as the only reason that you'll have the Longshanks Gunner is if your veils is 50. I think you'd essentially have to be on your second run through to do that, or just never visit Khan's Shadow and drop off the Gunnery Officer. All right, with that being said, let's get out to sea. So here we are, Fallen London. We have our chart. It's currently blank. <laughs> uh, the chart is somewhat randomized. There are certain things that are always gonna be in the same place. Vendor Bite's always up here. Um, Port Carnelian, uh, the Imperial area, the, basically the Demons of Hell, Wither and Codex, um, down here, somewhere is the dawn machine and then like basically there's sort of a flat set of continent runs up and down this stretch but you can always count on there being cities in these particular places uh, for that part there's also sort of quadrants where things usually are frost found is always in the north uh, uh, Aceville is always somewhere in the east you have areas like the isle of cavies and guiders morn they're typically more in the center of the map all of those things are things we're going to be looking for. So first things first, we get out exploring. All right, ship has two speeds, one and two. Uh, going at a slower speed consumes less fuel, but by and large isn't a good idea because your ship is so slow. 
without it. Uh, pressing the Z key allows me to send out a little Z bat, which will tell me where nearby islands are, such as Hunter's Keep, which is always our first stop. The lights consume fuel, so it's actually fairly important to keep them off if you're not using them. Right now, we're just uh, slowly walking through. Oh, whoops. Slowly walking through, keeping to the lights that are currently on the sea. You can see our terror is in yellow, which means the terror will slowly increase over time. We get out into the dark, it becomes red, it increases much faster. However, having our lights on, being close to land, or being in light, all good ways to not consume that fuel. So let's stop at Hunter's Keep. Alright, we can present ourselves at the house, and there we go. A visitor. Do excuse the indecorum, visitors are rare. This is a grand house with windows aglow. There are three sisters here. And uh, the sisters, you can talk with all three of them, and should talk with all three of them. Let's start with Phoebe, soft-voiced, watchful, and unpredictable. Has a story to tell of lovers part by water. She beats time on the table as she speaks, as if to a song only she can hear. The effect is hypnotic. Okay, so. We have gained some supplies, uh, no fragments, but 24 hunger, so life is very good there. And we get a memory of distant shores. Uh, having a, a little extra supplies is always helpful, which is why Hunter's Keep is always quite useful. Uh, we can also trade our recent news for additional stories with the sisters and supplies, and that's perfectly fine for our first run through. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll talk to Phoebe, we'll talk to Lucy next. Lucy has a complex story about a butler, a pig, and an inheritance, but is uh, delightful and cheery, and had I any terror at all, I would lose it here. Another one supply. We are now in very good shape. Okay, let's get going. Now, the more powerful your ship is, uh, the less likely you're going to want to have your lights on, actually, because one of the things about having a better engine in this ship is that it consumes more fuel. Um, you'll go a lot faster. You'll basically just jet around the islands, but um, as a result, uh, you'll probably want to expend less fuel by keeping your lights off and just uh, incur a little bit more of a terror issue, because terror is over time, as are supplies. So. You can spend less on supplies and terror when you have a more powerful engine, but you will generally spend more on fuel, which is cheaper anyways. So, fairly important. As we discover various things, such as Horniman the Stag and Venderbite, and here I am not changing. <laughs> uh, I set up this nice scene thing, I'm going to have to learn to constantly do what I'm supposed to do and switch them back and forth. So please excuse me if I forget to do that once or twice. Alright, so here we go. We've brought this decaying immigrant north, and this is interesting. The path, the past that you choose actually determines what happens with this tomb colonist. And this is a different person. Um, she wants... something different from me than what she normally wants, which is... Yeah, exactly that. I can help her out. I get a couple of suspicions and 200 echoes, um, which is pretty interesting. Suspicions here basically just means that when I come back to London, there's a good chance that they'll try to search my ship. That's usually not all that threatening, as long as I'm not doing anything that's um, thoroughly illegal, which I won't be. So uh, 200 echoes seems quite solid, and I also get an extra veils, which is really quite good. Okay, Venderbite. Venderbite is a pretty solid place to start. Um, I could obviously have come with 12 supplies and started up the last tour operator, but that's not something I want to do until I'm a little bit more established. Um, first things first, we'll go ahead and let's talk about something awaits you. Now, oh, goodness. Trigger that. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, something awaits you. Uh, whenever you are wandering about, you sometimes get the something awaits you option. And that is essentially means that there will be something special, a special option, that is available in the city where you can go out and have adventures. Um, something awaits you, you will typically get between every port when your ship is not very powerful, so 
always useful to have. Um, in any case, we'll use that to explore Vendor by today. The Carmine Chapel. Um, let's see here. I can search the place for 50% mirrors quality. I can leave. Um, we can see that this is somewhat related to menaces, unaccountably peckish, which uh, means that it's somewhat related to cannibalism, but uh, we don't necessarily need to know that. Uh, this is just a creepy old place. We are going to search for mirrors. All right, we failed the challenge. Didn't get anything cool, but didn't accrue any terror either, so all's good there. Visiting the first, first curator is always on the list in Vendor Bite. You uh, definitely want to do that at least once. Terribly afraid of moths. He has a whispered request. He wants seven colors. Cosmogone, Irigo, Pelagon. If you get them all, you can build something amazing. So we will accept that commission. And here we are. The Neathbo. Okay, with that in mind, we'll gather gossip. Uh, every port that you visit, you can gather a port report. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it requires a small check. Port reports are very useful because the uh, Admiralty back in London will pay for port reports on every place that you have visited since the last you visited Fallen London. And they pay in a small amount of echoes and at least one fuel, which means that they are an easy way to keep your ship afloat and keep flying, as they say in Firefly. Okay, so we'll go ahead and accept that, and that appears to be all of our lists. We can use Echoes to reduce terror if our terror is too high, but uh, by and large there's not really much to do here. We'll check the shops real quick. As you can see, fuel and supplies are both 10 Echoes more expensive here, which is not lovely. You can not buy Tomb Colonists, but you can sell them here. Um, you can also sell something called a Monstrous Almanac for a thousand, which uh, seems pretty high, actually. Uh, it might be worth trying to get a Monstrous Almanac at some point. Anyways. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's much here that's worthwhile. The casks of Mushroom Wine sell for 23 here. They're buyable for 21 in London. So if I'd purchased a couple, I could have made, made a couple of Echoes. Not a particularly big deal. I thought about it, but decided not to this time around. All right, anyways, I now have 200 Echoes, which is actually quite good. I'm going to keep with that. All right, so uh, traditionally I turn off my lights when I go through these areas. Oh, and we have a bit of combat. Combat, keep the lights on the enemies to keep the deck weapon going. You will take damage from enemies that ram into you. Once you've killed something, you can butcher it for supplies. Into the pot. I gain an extra terror, but I get an extra supply. Fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Bats are a really good way of reducing terror when you're just hanging around vendor bite. They reduce terror by about two or three. It's not a particularly good deal, but uh, they're about one of the only things that you can fight this early on, and uh, so you have to be pretty reasonable and pay attention to that. Um, there's not anything off to the left here, but it's useful to explore, just so you can do things like discover different areas. If you discover something like Pickett's Bluff, it goes on your map permanently. Uh, when you zoom in, you can see it. Ta-da! And then, in addition, you get some fragments for it. This is also kind of nice because it gets us up against the shoreline, which is fairly useful. We can see this life brig over here. It's got 400 HP and is very, very nasty, and we don't want anything to do with it. So we're going to turn our lights off and just slowly creep around it. Our veils are high enough that uh, the enemies are not likely to notice us and we can just sneak by them. Most of the things in Fallen London are not things you want to pick a fight with. The main exceptions are very small crabs, bats, and boats. And uh, all of those things you can sometimes fight, depending on what it is you're doing. So let's loop through the sensor's arch and uh, just take a quick stop at Wither and Codex. These areas aren't going to be terribly useful to us early on, but uh, it's still something worth considering. And I'll sound the all clear just so I'm not in combat anymore. That actually doesn't do anything, but... Alright, how am I looking on fuel? I've got 15 fuel. That's more than enough to continue for quite a bit. Careful not to hit anything. 
and as soon as I press E while I'm close, I make port. The pale wastes stretch white and silent as the face of the moon. From here, you can almost imagine they were snow. North of the city, the salt pools fizz with unlikely color. Well, that's actually a nice detail. I, I sometimes don't read these as well as I mean to, but uh, I like that it's actually not snow here. <laughs> All right, so exploring the town once again is a matter of whether or not I have something awaits you, which I do. So we check it out. Uh, we have an intriguing smell. The grilled troglodytes pond. Uh, I can also try shredded jellyfish or something mysterious. I'm a little worried about that. I think I'm just going to try the prawns. Yeah, a little bit of extra terror lost and a little bit of hunger lost. That's a small gain, but uh, certainly not unreasonable. Um, I have high enough veils that I can spend 50 echoes to acquire a shore leave and wither. That's not going to do much for me, aside from increase my hunger and decrease my terror. So we won't do that. Gathering intelligence. And we have a port report. Many ports will have shore leave. That's usually an option where you can spend echoes to reduce terror at the cost of supplies and echoes. So. Um, in this case, not really all that useful. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, Wither is a place of questions, uh, so we'll cover that real quick. Um, as you can see, their stores are a little bit different, and I will need to change this scene because it looks like it's just going to keep opening the wrong way. Which is not what I want. Let's do this. Let's do this a little differently, shall we? Okay. Eh, it's not ideal. No, not particularly ideal at all. I think what I would like instead is... Something like that. That's beautiful. Just perfect. Okay, there we go. And we'll worry about our ship's log in some other instance. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, when I tried uh, setting up this scene previously, I, I did in fact do the thing where I could change the location of my journal, and uh, it uh, persisted, but it doesn't appear to do that when I switch ports. So, <laughs> my mistake. Anatomical cabinets sell for 100 here, but for the most part, almost nothing sells for echoes or buys for echoes here. Instead, they trade in stories. Z stories in particular. If I have five Z stories, I can buy something called Muter Salt, which is uh, actually fairly useful for one specific purpose. I haven't discovered any other purposes for it, but uh, for five Z stories, that's actually a pretty steep price. Z star stories are fairly hard to come by. You will accumulate them over time, and you will have a lot of them overall, but they're not easy to find. And fuel, you just simply buy with Z stories here. Not really particularly useful. Okay, so, with that done, here we go. We have another lifeberg here. Uh, it's very important not to aggro the large enemies. <laughs> uh, we just don't want to do that. We're also trying not to spend our 200 echoes, because keeping a hold of all 200 of those echoes allows us to do something at the salt lions, which is one of the nice ways to establish yourself early. And uh, so we'll definitely try to do that. Uh, if you are close to a place, you can skim. Uh, the closer you are, the less your terror decreases. So it's not considered red here. Instead, I just put it in yellow. Okay. Isle of Codex is a deliberate, desperate cave full of mute exiles and an inexplicable colony of shivering, bad-tempered monkeys. We will compile a port report. Some are willing to communicate with the gestures are unfamiliar, even when you can understand their answers without questions, useless as a key without a lock. So Wither is the Island of Questions, and Codex the Isle of Answers. Uh, we'll just compile a port report and move right on. We haven't even accumulated the uh, uh, something awaits you quality, which will show up here. All right. Um, these dark spots are always considered to be abysses. That means they're explorable. They will be named if I get close enough to them with a light. And that gets me fragments, which is always extremely handy. Uh, now let's talk about fragments and secrets a little bit. 
so I've probably accumulated enough fragments to glean at least one secret. And indeed, I do have one. Uh, when I talk to my officers, I can increase stats based on what particular thing the officer wants me to improve that. A long check together will teach me how to increase my iron. So, we'll just learn that right now. It's usually useful to keep at least one secret in reserve once you've fully established yourself, but uh, by and large, it's not too uh, hard of a deal. Alright, and it looks like we have Mount Palmerston here, which is a very solid place to have unlocked. Okay. So we'll slowly move around Mount Palmerston, just skimming the edges again. Raising our terror a little bit, but conserving fuel. And uh, Mount Palmerston is a very handy place to have in the northern section, because one of the things that they do is they sell fuel here for very cheap. I believe it's nine echoes instead of ten. And it's very rare that you can find places outside of fallen London that sell fuel for less than ten echoes. Or for even ten echoes. Typically it's fifteen or twenty. So it's useful to have this place here. Um, obviously I can shop for supplies here, and yes, they are nine echoes. Alright, Mount Palmerston is a land of brimstone, and there are... The Brimstone Convention is, uh, <laughs> at the very top. If I head up the road, I can take tea with the wistful devilus. Road to the crater ends at a brass gate in the crater wall. Beside it stands an oddly charming little cottage thrown together from pumice and basalt, but it features honeysuckle. An equally charming devilus in a tea gown leans against the cottage well, twirling a parasol and fanning herself. I am the guardian of this place, she remarks languidly. You may not pass, but can I offer you a cup of amaryllarietta? Amaryllaria <laughs> tea. <laughs> Amaryllaria? That's not one of the poisonous ones, is it? You're pretty sure it's not. Uh, by the way, that is one of the poisonous ones. <laughs> but uh, we will take tea with the devilus nonetheless. The tea is hot and nutty and rather pleasant. Um, no doubt she'd be much less pleasant if you tried to break down the gate, but just now she is a courteous, soft-voiced woman in a tea gown. Um, she gets me some fragments, and next time she's here, she says, bring me a present if you like. So, we've taken tea with the wistful devilus. I am all about engaging with the Wistful Devilus. Um, she is absolutely a minion of hell, and you are dealing with the Brimstone Convention if you are dealing with the Wistful Devilus, but uh, eh, by and large, she seems fairly profitable to deal with, and uh, a lot of this game is about staying alive and not your particular moral compass. <laughs> you have a duty to your crew and your ship and to no one else in particular, but maybe fall in London second. So, we'll consider how that works here. Alright, so the Merciless Modiste is available here in Mount Palmerston. I have to bring five bales of parabola linen, which uh, is very expensive. I, I don't have the money for that yet. But she's a lovely first officer, she's extremely useful to have, and uh, I am not going to get her this time around. If I chat to the port folk, I will get a port report. And I can dig among the ruins to spend supplies, two supplies, to get some sort of treasure. That's an interesting question of whether I want to do that right now. What have I got? 21 out of 40 cargo? So I could dig among the ruins. There's a chance I could get a captivating treasure or a outlandish artifact, which is worth about 100 echoes, I believe. Um, or I could get some extra terror and uh, starve to death. <laughs> this is a risky bit of business, but I actually have a sizable amount of supply stockpiled at the moment, so I'm not feeling too bad about it. I think I'm going to try it once. All right, five here and two Zoop. Zoop sells for like 70 in Fallen London. It's extremely good, and I get a memory of distant shores. So all of that's very good. We don't want to do that again, however. If we spend too much time hanging around Mark Palmerston, then we're going to have a bad time. All right, now we can keep going. And I forgot to switch scenes in the first place, but uh, now I don't have to switch back. So there you go. Um, <laughs> I am using the, uh, the switching quite well, obviously. All right, Frostbound is to the east. It's a good idea to find Frostbound. Typically, I go here right away with the uh, navigator, 
which is the poet's particular first officer. But uh, as I am the urchin, uh, it's actually not as important that I visit Frostfound immediately. Now, Frostfound consists of two islands connected by a bridge. This is the upper one. We're not interested in that. We want the lower one. Although we will try to discover Bright. Let's see here. Come on, Bright. Show up on my map. There we go. Oh, that's Tanem. Okay. And there's the Sycamore Arch. And this should be Bright. Now, Frostfound is a very scary place. There are a lot of nasties lurking around here. We don't want to pick any fights here if we don't have to. But I think by and large we're doing okay. All right, Stoddard's Haven. Something awaits us in port, which is good, because Frostbound is a lovely place to stop when something awaits us in port. Towers and ramps and galleries and stairs of ice, raised and spun like an architect's honey dream. No spider ever wove so complex a web. The towers are utterly pristine, untouched by human life, but a pitiable encampment squats by the dock. All right, so the first thing I'm seeing here is that I can engage an officer, the tireless mechanic. Um, he's 20 echoes. Uh, he's an absolutely amazing officer. He gives you slight boost to fuel efficiency, which means that you spend less fuel overall. That's really good. Um, he costs 20 echoes, which I kind of don't like because I would like to have 200 echoes. But I think if I take him, then instead of going to the Salt Lions, I'll probably take a longer route and uh, do a lot of exploring, which was my original plan. So we'll do that. We now get the tireless mechanic. Officers, we always want to assign them while we are in port. If you do it outside of port, the sudden change in leadership will cause extra terror to your crew. Okay. So we have the tireless mechanic, and we can speak to him. Um, so, you can use this man to increase your veils, which is always good. Certainly have no reason not to increase my veils a little bit more. We'll get it up to 60. That's a very solid number. Uh, if I spend supplies on him, then he will learn new things. Um, I believe he will give me an objective here. Uh, do I want to do that now, is the question. Spending supplies on an officer uh, typically helps engage them in their personal quest. And this man is uh, pretty simple. His tastes are spartan, he eats little, drinks only water, and barely sleeps at all, so I only need to lay a simple table. However, that will put me down to four supplies? and 12 fuel, which uh, I don't quite have the ratios right, but I think that's a little too few, and I don't want to end up reverting to cannibalism at sea. If you have an excessive number of supplies, you can sometimes afford to be a little risky with your fuel. The other way around is not true. If you are low on supplies, that is the limit of how far you can go. So we won't invite him to dine with us just yet. However, if we take tea with the squatters at the dock, we should actually get an extra fuel and a loss of terror. And uh, a nice little story. <laughs> Frostbound is a very strange and scary place. I really quite like it. We'll get that port report and we'll move on. No shops available, no shipyards of course. Alright, so onwards we go. Alright, so we've slowly been exploring to the right. Further right is the Abbot Horizon. Very nasty beasties lurk around there. I think what I want to do now is divert downwards. Um, the Abbot Horizon is extremely nice. And back to the main <laughs> thing we go. But uh, we actually have business in Guider's Morn, and I believe this is Guider's Morn. The Snares. Pigmoat Isle. Oh! <laughs> Pigmoat Isle. Okay, this one's always a treat. So, Pigmoat Isle is home to the cavies and the rats. And I'm gonna discuss that with them in just a little bit. There is a maelstrom over here. Those are always worth looking at with your light because they give you secrets. Even if you're, you know, currently skimming around trying not to accumulate terror. But yeah, careful management of your light is actually really important later in the game. So I'm trying to do a lot of that now. Keep in practice. All right, Pigmont Isle. Two houses, both alike. In Disney. In Disney. All right, we're going to run through this fairly fast, I believe. But uh, uh, there will be a chance to pause and read these things. 
But, uh, as we can see, there is a war between two tiny figures. A delegation is made, a choice is presented, a war is declared. The following is an extract from the popular Diary of a Sea Captain. From London to Irem, and what we did there before we arrived. Washed ashore on Mutton Island and sucked the sea zero eyes in the unexpurgated gazette. The author's identity remains unknown. Alright, so we have rodents, radis fabbers, and... The Isle of Cavia, Lady Augusta Devereux Swinch of the Blackwater Swinches, Sanestel to our King Graysnaw, first of his name, and Edgar, second chief engineer of the Third Rat Brigade. Um, this is a war between rats and guinea pigs? <laughs> and we can speak to both of them, and what we generally find out is that they are warring over the island and the rat star, which is a large and glowing jewel, which I must hear about. All right. Uh, brokering a piece is fairly difficult this early, and also I'm not interested in favoring the rats. Sanestrals are uh, fairly fun little noble pygmies, uh, and they also have a better bonus than the rats, in my opinion, because they sell Cintillac, and Cintillac is extremely valuable. So. Uh, we're gonna go for that. Okay, we're going. The cabbies. I get one supplies and one fuel just for doing that, which is lovely. Uh, and now I get into chapter three. As you can see, some of the Sunless Sea stories, some of these islands have extremely detailed stories uh, that you can go through fairly quickly, actually. We can visit the hospital here, and uh, we can see that many people are sickened. The rats are in trouble. Visit the steam penance by the beach. The splendor of Cavi overtook this vessel. Visit the barracks. Uh, we can see that the rats have no weapons, but uh, these men's do. And then, uh, let's... I can't quite speak to my tireless mechanic again. I'd kind of like to raise my veils at least one more time here, but that's okay. It's time for the audience with the king. Retrieving the lady's eye by fourth force is an iron quality of 40, but stealing the eye with cunning is a veils quality challenge of 90%, because I have 60 veils, so I'm actually in fairly good shape. And uh, so we'll definitely opt for the easier option. Taking as few risks as possible is one of the things that really will keep you alive in Sunless Sea. We succeeded in the veils challenge, grabbed the eye, and the cabbies rewarded me suitably on my return. Oh, I got an entire 10 fuel, which, uh, wow, that's magnificent, actually. That allows us to just sort of jet around for quite some time. Okay. So, we can invite one of the cabbies to join us, and we can also speak up on behalf of the rats. Um, I don't think that that's actually going to do us anything right now. Uh, brokering a piece is certainly possible, but not anything we're going to do at the moment. All right. So we get our guinea page. Oh, I guess I can speak on the one behalf of the rats. Okay. I could not forge peace between the rats and the cabbies, but our business is concluded and a new nation has been founded. We have been fed. We have a port report. We can now purchase Cintelec, and we can visit the rat ghetto or steal the ladies' eye. Let's visit the rat ghetto. Smuggling fuel into the ghetto will improve Pigmoat Isle's spirit, which is actually pretty solid. Um, and if you get high enough spirit, you can broker a union. They gave me 10 fuel to work with, so I can actually do this right now. Uh, making a union between the two would be pretty solid. Let's go ahead and give them some fuel. We get a cache of curiosities, which is lovely. And now we're at a 40% chance, so... I'd rather like to resolve this as soon as possible, so we'll go ahead and do that again. And we're getting some cool stuff out of this, so it's certainly not uh, unreasonable. Extra spirit, another memory of distant shores. Uh, looks like spirit is already too high, and now attempting to broker a union is a 60% chance of success. Helping the cavies resolve with Dilemma could perhaps raise spirit higher? I am not certain. 
a 60% chance to organize a united front between the rats and the pygmies. I think I'm going to go ahead and try that. Rats are too angry to talk peace, and we have failed. Well, it looks like I can attempt to broker a union again, but the spirit was lowered, so I don't think we're going to waste any more. Well, well we, no, we, we have plenty of fuel available, so yeah, let's try that one more time. We'll raise their spirit, and we will the rat ghetto, and broker a union. All right, the rats are allowed back in Kavia Town, and we get a stout crate, which gains us some fuel back. Fantastic. All right, so now we have many, many rodents. Everything's looking lovely. Um, we can steal the uh, blue centilac that is uh, their birthright, but uh, no particular reason to do that now. But I can also buy centilac at 105 apiece. Not particularly interesting. We will leave that alone. No, and they don't have shops right now. Okay. So, this officer, we can engage a mascot that increases our pages by two, as opposed to our comatose ferret, who I can play with. Play, I played once. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and assign this as our mascot, our guinea page. Now we have a couple of extra pages. Life is good. And off we go. Okay. So we're still looking for Guider's Morn, which is somewhere close-ish to London. Um, that's going to be one of our most important stopping points. We want to avoid that jelly floor entirely. Is that crab cake? Crab cake, okay. Uh, this thing is probably something that I could fight, but at great personal cost to my ship. Uh, killing one, however, will grant me a Z story, uh, provided I let it dissipate. You can also butcher it and sometimes get a strange catch, both of which are extremely useful. Um, but neither of which I'm particularly interested right now. So we're going to just proceed along until we find something new. There's our distant bells. Once again, something new is available. Send out our bat. And Guider's Morn is to the south. So we're simply going to move along. Uh, we might actually take a look at that lighthouse at some point. Oh, is that Guider's Wait, that... That looks like Guider's Morn right there. How is it a long way to the south and it's there? Oh, that's the Bornvidus Pillar. Okay. Which is not Guider's Morn. No. Okay. Alright, so that's a couple of extra fragments for some secrets. Life is good. And here we are. Port of Guider's Morn. Oh my goodness. As we slowly sail. And here we are. Alright. So the Morn, this is a place full of pirates. And uh, it looks like I can pay five echoes for the strategic information that the Admiralty requested. And I can also apparently not pay for it, which I, I'm fine with paying five echoes. Seems like that would be too much of a risk. All right. Um, I can explore the Morn, for I have something awaits you. And it looks like I get the street vendor again. Um. Uh, reduced terror and hunger at, by a very small amount. Seems perfect. No reason to take a big risk here. I can overhear rumors of the pirate poet. Uh, I don't know what that does. That might be the only way that you unlock the pirate poet. 
but I've never actually seen her. So, in any case, at 72%, I can gather a port report. Uh, it's worth doing. I can lose crew members if I fail, but I'm not going to lose enough that I'm too worried. So, all right, I, I was successful. So now I have a port report of Guider's Morn. Um, and there's absolutely no reason to go to the errant limits unless you want to acquire uh, terror, especially when nothing awaits you at port. Oh, but right over here is uh, the Conate. So we're just going to go that way. Yeah, these two are conveniently close to each other. All right. So the Conate is a middle area. It's almost always in the dead center of the map. It's fairly far from fallen London. And the two are opposing factions. They're uh, very much opposed to each other. Conate ships will actively hunt me. Um, I am not actually allowed access to the Conate quarter. And uh, anything I do here will likely increase my Conate suspicion, which is something that's fairly relevant. However, um, the Shops here, I believe, are actually quite profitable. I've never actually unlocked them before, but I'm going to do my damnedest to do that this time. Because I'd really like to have a good place to stop and acquire fuel, and perhaps crew. Um, yes, so let's see here. As you can see, I have a lot of fascinating options here, most of them expensive. Uh, to seek a commercial light sums, I will need to go to Khan's Glory, and I will probably need to have a lot of drowning pearls, which I don't have right now. I also need coffee. Um, Port report here is a 72% chance of fails. Uh, it's worth about 50 echoes, so it's probably it might only be 30, but it's still it's still probably worth trying. All right, I gained two suspicion for that and didn't get my port report, and now it's even harder. Um, I think I don't want to do that. Actually, no, it's it's worth trying. It's worth continuing to try. We'll increase our veils two or three times. Should have done that first. It's worth continuing to try until you're around like five or six, and then you should be very, very, very careful. But out of 70%, yes, we got our port report and we got a single point of Kaganian suspicion. We don't want that ever to reach 10. Uh, it becomes a lot harder to get access to the Nephrite quarter where all of the money is uh, without reaching 10. Uh, the Kane is rich with locations that you can discover. There's a lot of places to gain fragments and convert them into secrets here, so it's always worth it to just pass your light over everything you see, and just try to unlock a lot of stuff. And there's Tymen. Um, Khan's Glory is just up ahead, and unlocking Khan's Glory will do me a lot of good. These fog banks will always increase terror, so they're fairly uh, unpleasant to deal with. Looks like there's nothing I can do here. Um, if I had Drowning Pearls, I could trade them to the Time End, but I don't have Drowning Pearls, so I can't. But Drowning Pearls are quite fantastic for exactly this purpose and almost nothing else. There's a Connect ship there. I don't want to go too close to it because it will shoot me. And there's the House of Ancestors, and I believe that little island right there is also explorable. Let's see what it says. The Tortoise. Okay. So now that we're not in the fog, we can turn off our light and just glide. Um, the thing that we want to do is actually not go here, but instead we wish to go downwards. We're far to the southeast, not that far to the southeast, of the Khanate is Khan's Shadow. And that's actually the destination that our lovely Longshanks Gunner is looking for. So, we're just gonna move on down. If this ship sees me, I'm in a lot of trouble. I need to try to stay out of its lights. But I can already see the con shadow, so I will turn my lights on in just a second here. Alright, here we go. And there we are, con shadow. So thus far, this is turning out extremely well. made a fairly small loop. Alright, and I can
can let my Longshanks gunner go ashore. So we got the scent of freedom now, and she's for the city of broken ships. Farewell. Farewell. She gave me three drowning pearls, two outlandish artifacts, a casket of sapphires, a hunting trophy, and an ambiguous aeolith. All of which are quite fantastic. Um, they're, they're all moderate value items worth, uh, you know, between 50 and 100 echoes. And indeed, I believe I will sell the sapphires. Oh, I will sell the outlandish artifacts here. I could get very, very, uh, very, 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 hmm, that's an interesting question. Outlandish artifacts are really quite lovely, um, we will want to sell them here just for the extra bit of money, we want to have at least 200 echoes, as we've said. I can buy a crate of human souls here, which is meh, don't really care. Supplies and fuel are both more expensive, and I'm not largely looking to spend money on things that I don't need at the moment. That empty mirror catchbacks is extremely tempting. Um, I will need it for a quest. Um, in fact, I will need it for uh, the tireless mechanics quest. And it's also just handy to have, but... Um, hmm. Do I want to get that now? Get an empty mirror catch box. Lay men, I believe, or the other thing. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting question. I'm well, currently at eleven and five supplies. That's a uh, that's a sizable amount of supplies that we're missing. We should be a bit careful, and uh, perhaps not take it on this pass. I love having mirror catch boxes in my inventory, but uh, at the moment I don't need them. So. And look at that casket of sapphires. Okay. Stygian ivory. It's kind of handy to have some of this on hand, but it uh, doesn't really need to be anything that I have, so I think we'll just go ahead and proceed. Eventually we're going to want to try to move back up towards the salt lions, which will probably be in this section. I could go to Aistable. Tides of Appetite are some distance to the southwest. Alright, and that's a place I definitely want to stop. So let's do that. The Tides of Appetite are almost always fairly close to a place called Polythrain. Where are you? Elsius class Corvette. Okay. Small ships like that are uh, sometimes fairly low health ships that uh, have about 30 health. And sometimes they're Elsius class Corvettes, which are extremely fast ships that have uh, quite a bit of health. I don't really want to pick a fight with that one because it's quite nippy, and uh, if I get into a situation where I need to run, it's gonna be able to catch me every time, and that's very bad. I believe some small part of this left side can be detected. Forlorn, endure, obey, commink. Alright, I've discovered all four of them, I believe, so let's just move around. We're taking a bit of a bonking here. Uh, woo! Ooh, I've never gotten this before. Um... I think it's right to uh, go ahead and... Uh, yeah. Uh, so that would get me Stone's attention. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a chance that I could earn Stone's curse by keeping it, which would be very sad for me, and also increase my terror. But as a result, I have decreased terror, which is uh, certainly something good. Having low terror, I believe, triggers some interesting events out at sea. All right, so we're just going to slide along till we get into Poly 3. That's going to be quite good for us, because Polythreme has clay men. Alright, and clay men bound for London. 
will hop on board. I can carry them for a decent amount of echoes back at home. Go ahead and gather a port report. That's lovely. Looks like the casket of sapphires I can sell here for 95. Uh, which is extremely tempting. Let's see here. Yeah, that's perfectly worthwhile. So we are clay. Equips to the auxiliary, and this is a really fantastic item. Uh, it decreases my crew quarters by three, which um, can be a little tricky here because it means that I have, like, I think if I go below four crew members, I have some problems. But uh, the nice thing about it is that it increases my engine power, which makes me a little bit nippier. It increases my iron, which is extremely good. And uh, it reduces crew requirements, which means that I spend less food getting from place to place. I feel like We Are Clay is a fantastic early buy, and I have enough Echoes for it, so I'm going to get it. I'm still not holding on to that 200 Echoes, but uh, for We Are Clay, I think that's well worth the price. Okay, so we've made some good decisions so far, and we're actually getting close to the bottom of which, uh, yeah, that could be very useful for us. I think instead of moving off to the right, where there are a lot of fairly dangerous things going on... Ooh, I could maybe get to the Empire of Hands from here. Um, there are some interesting places to go. <sighs> We're not going to the Isle of Cats, really. That looks like Godfall right there. Yes, okay. So Ace Jivin is fairly close to... Um, polythreme this run around, which makes it a nice hop. Um, I can get a port report for them from them fairly easily. These delightful people. And I can also offer them a hunting trophy for something. I don't actually know what. They gave me a sea story, a tale of terror, and a memory of distant shores. A fantastic number of stories for a hunting trophy. I think that's well worth the price. Um, you can sometimes exchange hunting trophies for drowning pearls, which is quite solid. And it looks like with foxfire candles I can explore the Shattered Citadel, but uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. Alright. Moving on. We're at 10 fuel, which means we need to start looking for new places to park our boat, or start looking at home. What's our current hold look like? Soup. If I make it to the Salt Lions and somehow pick up 30 Echoes along the way, I'm in extremely good shape. Not sure how to do that, though. Getting 30 Echoes could be pretty tricky. Demo Island is to the west. That's the place where I find the Iron and Misery Funging Co. station, and uh, possibly a couple of the extra echoes that I'm looking for. We'll just go ahead and try to move on that way. And now that our fuel supplies are getting a little low, we want to linger a little closer to Fallen London. Once we get back there, we'll be able to drop off port reports for a substantial amount of fuel fix up our hull if we so choose. Oh, Visage is somewhere to the southwest, and Visage is a lovely place to explore. So I will probably go there next. Yes, I believe I can make that trip. And indeed that leads me back to the uh, Iron Republic pretty early on, which is a solid, solid deal. Let's go. Alright! So, I can take tea with the factor here. We get the port report, of course. Uh, with one echo, I can hire on a crew member here, which is a fantastic choice. Um, exploring Demo Island is also quite lovely, but I think tea with the factor unlocks a... Uh, it unlocks a... restaurant in Vendor Bite called the... The, uh... Yeah. It's called Jonah's something or other. And you get a couple of supplies out of it, so yeah, perfectly so. Gathering supplies here increases terror, but gives me a good chance of getting extra supplies. I think I'm okay for now, so we'll just go ahead and go on.
And uh, yes, to the southwest. To the southwest. Oh, it's just to the south now. And there it is, Visage, the Isle of Masks. is to the west. That's a lovely place to go. It's actually quite good to have it a little closer. Alright, port report. Oh, I don't have something awaits you. Having something awaits you in Visage is actually fairly important. So let's go ahead and poke our head off to the east a little bit. Oh, we're at seven fuel right now. It's very sad that we can't actually engage in a Visage storyline, but uh, I don't think there's much I can do about that. Alright, let's move towards the Isle of Cats. Peter's Rocks. Fantastic bits of exploration. We're doing extremely well. Um, we're gonna run into Fallen London just in the nick of time, exactly how I like to do it. Um, actually, I'm probably not even going to run to Fallen London, I'm probably going to run up to the Iron Republic and pick up some fuel there. But uh, we'll check in the Isle of Cats first. I have not yet found Salt Lions, but I don't really need to find the Salt Lions just yet. Here we go. Alright, Port Cavendish. Um, I can bribe the Port Cavendish official to not write down my details in this nice official ledger. Okay. Um, I've never seen this before. This must be a unique option to the person who is trying to accumulate wealth. Oh no, this is a beginner's luck option. Okay. Um... I've gotten a beginner's luck option in Avid Horizon before, and it was a crate of sapphires. It was quite excellent. Um, I'm kind of interested in this. Let's go for it. Uh, he gave me an empty mirror catch box and a mirrors, which is absolutely uh, what I'm looking for. So that's lovely. Um, yeah, a mirror catch box in uh, this area is beautiful. And it's worth a good 250 echoes, so yeah, that's quite solid. Alright, compile a port report. That'll allow us to start trading sunlight fairly early, which uh, is something well worth doing. Especially with the Isle of Cats so close to the Iron Republic. Oh man, yeah, that's excellent. Alright, let's do the piratical look. Yep, he had another menace suspicions. Okay, good times, good times. And uh, now we can learn things about the Pirate King. And once again, I should be this mode. <laughs> what are things about the Pirate King? Uh, clandestine doings. Religious observances. The Mellifera's sisters. And I can leave the Yellows. Now that I know all of those things, I can start to appeal to various people. Uh, comforting a sea captain costs me fragments, but it gains me attention with the Pirate King. And getting attention with the Pirate King is fairly relevant. Let's go ahead and ask what Red hun Honey is. And this is essentially, uh, yes, bees sucking the brains of humans' memories and instilling them in honey. Uh, deliciously awful. Okay. This place is very unusual. Um, I have enough fragments to actually accumulate 60, 120, 240 of the Pirate King's attention. And if I have another option in here, uh, give away five fuel? No, that's okay. I think I'm good. I already have one of uh, the Pirate King's notice, so I can actually just consistently comfort this fellow here and immediately establish relationships with the Isle of Cats. I 
And with that done, we now have meetings with the King's Claw. Oh goodness, I didn't mean to do that. Our options are Zyra or the King's Claw. Um, they're both perfectly awful people. <laughs> And I have to decide between the two of them. Or I don't necessarily. I don't actually have to deal with these people at all. They're quite nasty. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and meet with... Ah. Uh, okay, so one thing that I really need to worry about here is that I have a lot of uh, suspicion. So I don't think I actually need to meet with either of these people just yet. Because... When I go back to London, my ship is likely to be searched. So we'll just just leave it alone. And uh, next time we come around, we will be all ready to go ahead and talk with one of them. Maybe do something highly illegal. All right, there's a ship over there. Uh, can't see it just yet. All right, uh, the parentheses name means that it is a tramp steamer that I know of. And we're actually running pretty short on fuel right now, so we have to be pretty careful. Off we go in the wild blue yonder. Running without lights is helpful here. Um, ooh, is that the Grand Geode? That's something. It's quite pretty. Beautiful little island. I think we're fairly close to the Grand Geode. so far, though. Keep to the light, save ourselves a little fuel, just skim about. Not a discoverable island, sadly. You know what, this should tell me where the Grand Geode is. No islands within range, okay. Well, we'll keep exploring then. Need to keep our lights off at the moment. The Iron Republic is to the west, and that is very good for me because that's where I want to go. In fact, I can stop somewhere else before then just to keep up the. Uh... We'll do a little exploring here. We're free to waste some fuel. No particular hurry. I'm curious deep, but we're actually very close to the Iron Republic. So here we go. Welcome to hell. Here we are in Hell's client state. Factory engines roar like false lands, blood thunders in the dockpipes, crimson lightning skitters across the deck, leaps to the rail, curls there like a cat. The city is reflected in the glassy calm harbor water. Um, alright, well first thing I'm seeing here is that I can hire on a gunnery officer who is fantastic. The irrepressible cannoneer is absolutely somebody we want on our crew. He raises our iron by quite a bit, which means that we'll have a lot better time in fights, and he's also really a lot of fun to talk to. He's got a wonderful quest, one of the first quests that we'll be completing, and uh, so it's something that we're definitely going to be wanna, wanting to be looking for. Uh, talking to him requires us to spend a lot of fuel and supplies, though, so we'll have to be pretty careful about that. Alright, in any case. So, uh... This is a thing. Let's go ahead and do the market of hunters. Alright, so the way that um, these places work is a little bit different than most places normally work. Looks like we can sell Skintelac here for 74, so if we can get it for cheap at the Isle of Cabbies, that'd be pretty excellent. We can also get a Judgment Egg by killing a Colossal Fluke. Certainly an option. Okay, in any case. Um, yeah, there are some neat things in the House of Pleasures, but the neatest thing of all is fuel for... No more than eight echoes. I 
think we just want to buy up as much fuel as possible here. We're almost on our way home, but uh, yeah, that should uh, get us there with plenty to spare. And we'll have a really nice time. Uh, I believe we can use that for the Irrepressible Cannoneers thing, so totally worth doing. Now, the question that is always worth asking here is whether or not we want to compile a port report. The Iron Republic is one of the only places where you might not want to compile a port report, because doing so will sometimes increase and sometimes decrease your hearts, and sometimes your pages too, I think? It's very unusual. It's not worth a terrible lot. It's uh, 10 in 1 fuel. I think in this instance we're going to give it a shot. I'm just always kind of fascinated by the Iron Republic. Another day, Iron Republic days more than 14. Yeah, compiling a port report seems fine. We might lose hearts, but uh, I'm not too worried about it. What did we get? We lost one pages. <sighs> that's kind of terrible. We also got a tale of terror and a memory of distant shores, and that's not at all unreasonable. Tales of terror are relatively valuable. They're probably worth about 50 echoes. Um, they are certainly used in a lot of different things. We can use them to construct interesting things, and uh, the Tittering Artificer here is selling a forward-mounted weapon that fires monster hunters. <laughs> uh, don't get this thing unless you want to fight bosses. I highly... I just do not recommend it. Alright. So anyways, since we know we're not stopping at the Salt Lions, we're perfectly happy with what we've just done. And now we have enough fuel to get out and get going. Huh. However, we do need to be moving on at a decent clip, because we're only at two supplies. So we need to get up to fall in London before we run out of food. I think we'll be pushing it a little bit. We'll probably get a little peckish. Morale might dissipate, but uh, by and large, I think we've made it. <laughs> Let's play the game of, does Pojo remember to change his scene? Okay. Adam's Doom, as always. Lovely to see you. Um, might be worth keeping my light on here. That sets my terror to green, which is, uh, always good. I can actually... I have enough to do a little exploring up and down the coast. I don't know how I feel about that all in all. But if I can see something interesting. It's okay to waste a little fuel to try and get our chart a bit better field out, filled out. We're on a perfectly good run. Okay, we fed the crew, we have one supplies left. And we have quite a bit of fuel, actually. If we had just a little bit more supplies, we could have ended this out with a trip to the surface. Uh, which would not have been worth it, but uh, would have been pretty close to worth it since we have that mirror catch box. Indeed, I think we might take our next route in the opposite direction, because we can take a mirror catch box to this place, fill it with sunlight, and then use a Veil's challenge to sell it at the Isle of Cats. Alright, here we go. The Cumaean Canal uh, ascends through locks and gates and shadow turns to the sunlight of the surface. This is your route to the upper world. And uh, the sun is dangerous to neath dwellers like your crew, the longer I stay in the sun, the more likely I am to just die. The longer my crew stays in the sun, the more likely they are to just die. Um, however, it's totally worth it to go up here every now and then, because supplies are very cheap. I think they sell for almost nothing. And, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to cost a lot of fuel, but if you sell coffee up there, you can make out like a bandit. Especially once you have the merchant ship. Um, but at the moment, I don't think it's especially worth it. So, here we go. Listen for the surface gossip. Oh, lovely. I have moves in the great game. I can get moves in the great game here. That's wonderful. Moves in the great game are one of the rarer little bits of secrecy and uh, storytelling. So, yeah. All right. And then a port report. A perfunctory port report of the Cuman Canal. All right. And I can buy stuff at the shop here, but uh, nope, nothing I want to buy. Even though my crew is almost starving, I think we will be okay. We're probably going to pass by Mutton Island, and if we pass by Mutton Island, we can usually kill a crab to keep ourselves alive. So here we go. Mm, care is still pretty... pretty low. We don't have solid options for reducing terror right now, because we don't have a ton of money. 
but uh, it's nonetheless probably worth it to just go ahead and uh, move on up. Alright, what are we looking at here? Eh, those islands over there are not particularly interesting. I don't think there's anything useful there. Well, let's go ahead and keep sending out our Z-Bat. And as we can see, Mutton Island is to the northeast. So let's go ahead and uh, detour over there. That is a blue Caligo class cruiser. Nothing particularly to worry about. I don't think it can engage in combat with me. Oh! What? 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 <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Oh, there's a midnight ceremony on Mutton Island. I don't think I've ever done this one before. Let's check it out. a little creepy. For one echo, however, we can get a port report. <laughs> I haven't had exactly one echo. <laughs> uh, Alright, and that crab right there is our next destination. Hello, Auroral Megalops. So, as you can see, my crew needs feeding. I need to be a little careful that I don't engage both of these crabs at the same time. You can fire before you're at 100%, uh, but uh, it will be a chance to hit. And like XCOM, taking chances to hit is not particularly good. In this case, I did it, however. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to butcher it for supplies. 48 hunger is lost. My crew is now perfectly well fed. And we're not going to have to worry about running out of supplies before we hit fall in London, which means we aren't going to have to worry about morale decreasing. Um, let's do that one more time. This one I won't need to feed on, so I'll just butcher it for secrets. Yeah. And by firing just before it hit me, I managed to engage it. Oh, I accidentally butchered it for supplies, but that's okay. We just needed it out of the way so that we could get our way back into Fallen London. Put our lights on through this fog bank here. get up to the surface and into the light, and we can just skim our way in nice and safely. Those white outlines dictate areas you can't go. There's no white outline here for some reason, but you can't go there. Um, yeah. And now, home waters. And we slowly coast in to fall in London. This will end out our episode for the day. Listen to the lovely, lovely sounds of home, and we will make our way in. Success! <laughs> Alright, we'll collect the messages from the Harbor Master real quick. We have a free evening, the Rose Market is available, something's changed underneath, we have someone who wants to sign on. All of these things are things that we can deal with. Uh, very shortly, but I don't believe I need to deal with them right away. So we'll probably call that for the day and uh, see how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I will see you next time.